Okay, so tactical reloads is the other type of reload that we do very, very commonly. And the tactical reload, basically I've engaged a target, I see that he's dead, I fired somewhere about around a half a mag. At that point, I know that I want to top this mag up because I have time and opportunity to do it. So the way I want to do this is I don't want to go to my speed reload spot because that's that's my spot to save my butt if I really need it. I want to go to the furthest mag away from my speed reload spot. The hardest mag to get on your body. I want to bring it out. I want to index it. I, I make a nice L shape here. Everybody got that? L shape? Okay. And basically, I eject this mag and just rotate it in. This magazine, because I still have BBs in it that can help me later, I'm stowing it back in that old pouch. And because this is a partial magazine and these are full, as I speed reload these, I can start bumping them up. But that is where we're going to do your tactical reload from. And you retain that magazine. Don't throw it in your dump pouch because you still have BBs in there, half a mag. Now if you think you're almost on empty, sure, if you want to go ahead and just put a fresh in, go for it. But if you have that time and opportunity, you want to go for the furthest mag away so that you still set up for success and speed reloads later. Does that make sense, everybody? Roger. Okie dokie. So, we'll practice attack reload. So make sure that the em your empty is in the hardest to reach spot on your rig setup that uh, you want to go for. All right? And I'll let you guys practice this on your own. So come up. You have time and opportunity. Grip it. Change your mags out. And then stow it. Yes. Uh, Def Tick has a great point. I'll actually let him highlight this because. Guys, when you're doing this, keep it up here in your face. Where you can see down range. Because if you drop it like this and do it down here, your head's down. You don't see anything out here. So if you keep it up here, you know, you can still see what's out ahead of you. So keep it up in your. You can actually as Mac pulls it, it works like this. Yes. This. So this little reload. imaginary bubble in front of your head is your workspace. Yeah, okay. see, if you keep it up in your workspace, you can see downrange while you're performing it. You're kind of <laughs> keeping that gun in your <laughs> peripheral <laughs> vision. <laughs> Alright. Good job. Good job. Alright, some of you with uh, flat pouches are probably noticing um, they kind of suck. Um, one trick to having flat pouches is you can tuck it in behind the magazines. That helps a lot for this stuff. And um, so that maybe your primary speed load spot, you'll tuck in. And the others you can leave flat so you can retain those uh, magazines. Um, the other shingle type pouches like Whiskey has with the retention straps, those are great too. Um, oh, as they you don't can get in the way. I have shingles as well that I use. These actually hold magazines in pretty good. I can jump up and down. These don't fall out. So uh, as long as you can lean over and your mags don't go plop, you know, it's probably a good pouch. Uh, cheaper than dirt, I'll give. So I'll give them a plug. They have some great stuff. Anyway. All these pouches need to be cheaper than dirt. <laughs> okay. They're so indoors, everybody knows the difference between attack reload and a speed reload. Yes. Sir. What is the difference between speed reload and a tactical reload? Don't show me, tell me. Speed reload is when you are zero in your mag. Right. You reload to finish engaging a target. Tactical yep. reload is when you have an opportunity, pause and barrel, and you're top off the mag. Perfect. Good answer. Thank you. Okay. So we got that down and covered. A simpler way of putting it would be speed reload is somebody shooting at you, tactical reload is nobody shooting at you. Yeah, pretty much. And that makes it easier to remember. Um, another great tip for speed reloading, uh, I know I'm pra we're practicing this from the standing position. If you are getting engaged or you are engaging a target and you got to do a speed reload, it is a great idea to drop to a knee to do it. Because if they're trying to acquire you, they got to now move their gun up and down trying to get that other target acquisition. So if you got to do a speed reload and you have the ability, drop down to a knee. That it will help you, your survivability, quite a bit. So, um, which is something we actually learned in a recent pistol class for real steel. So, and uh, if that particular.
particular operator that worked with Delta Force tells me that, then I'm going to believe them. Um, that it worked. So, anyhow, going forward, the other thing that we want to cover just real quick before we get into uh, some of our buddy movements and things like that is also to do pistol transitions. Those of you who have sidearms, you're going to want to practice with them. And the pistol transition. So anyway, pistol transitions. Why would we want a pistol transition? Well, there's a few reasons. One, I'm advancing on an enemy. My mag runs dry. It is easier for me to drop this mag and have that pistol out ready to go than it is for me to do a speed relay. And I already have this particular gun has about 25 BBs. Um, from the testing range earlier, proves it, uh, 75 feet, no problem for most pistols especially that are CO2 or green gas. Uh, wouldn't recommend it for a um, Springer. <laughs> if you're carrying a Springer today, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you're going to definitely want to find a holster setup that works for you. You'll notice I don't have any pouches right here where my pistol placement is. And that is so that this comes out no problem. There's nothing in the way. If you find you have pouches bumping up against it and stuff, you're probably going to want to move those one of those gear tips. We actually have a great uh, gear setup video that covers that. But So, pistol transition. For those of us with one point slings that are integrated, this is very easy for those that aren't. Um, I'm sorry. So, you want to start from your shooting position. This hunk of rifle is no good to me. I have no BBs in it. I'm just dropping it and I'm coming out with my pistol to engage. Alright. So for those of you who have pistols who want to practice it, um, those of you who have some kind of funky holsters here and there, you're going to find that these holsters, like the surface that have retention, I cannot pull this thing out for the life of me without pressing the button. You'll find that these things are, are a really good $25, $30 investment, and uh, they work extremely well. If you decide to buy one, buy it online. They're awfully expensive locally. If you can get them online yeah. for $20, $30. Bucks. If you get it at a store, it's going to run you $30 or $40. Easy. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of us who have real still equipment, uh, guess what kind of real still weapon I have? <laughs> you have a Glock 18? I was not aware of that. I wish. <laughs> uh, I have a Glock 19, which just happens to fit this as well. Um, a lot of us advocate to train with the type of airsoft pistol or very close to that you have for real still or you're interested in using for real still. Because uh, this will definitely help you with, even though it is airsoft, it's not the same recoil. The triggers are set up very much the same way. These things are real realistic now. And um, obviously the frame of the gun, the hold, and everything else is the same. So, good thing to press. Anyhow, the other thing about uh, pistol. If you happen to go to your pistol, if you are advancing on a target, and your pistol goes dry, you reload your pistol. Um, the other thing is, if you end up on your pistol, and it goes click, and but let's say you have a buddy who's covering you. What do you reload first, your pistol or your M4? She's now here. Guys, pistol. Pistol. It has saved my butt before, just like my speed reload spot. It can save my butt again. I'm gonna reload my pistol and then make sure that I'm still good and reload my M4. Check my battle buddy. Make sure I still have time, he's still covering me, and then I'm going to work on reloading my M4. It saved me before, it can save me again. 75 feet, it's very effective. At 100 feet, it's a little iffy, but if you're closing the distance like we're talking about, it's not going to matter. Another way, reason we draw our pistols a lot, very close quarter CQB. Some of these mount sites have little bitty tiny rooms where having an M4 in front of your face is just too big. I mean, you're talking narrow, narrow hallways. Yes. Or they're single shot only. If you accidentally bump your selector, selector lever to full auto, that, that's bad. Yeah. They, um, they'll, they'll kick you out of the game sometimes. Yes. Unless you're Sergeant E. Ward Overall, because he likes up his people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this was his target. Yes. I got shot by my own team commander at the last Irene. Full auto, auto in indoors, <laughs> which is 100% elite. And the funniest part about it is he actually, he actually asked.
that's the code word that Joel Baroff gave out. Yeah, to he the gave a challenge team. response. I see a guy I don't know walking in the room. We had militia wandering around that weren't with us. I see a guy I don't know walking in the room. I bring up my gun and I give him the challenge and he lit me up full auto. So, in doubt, cool. when in doubt, I guess just shoot. <laughs> the left. There's all. All right. <laughs> um, last little lesson before we get to the uh, more movement stuff. Final thing that I want you guys to keep in mind as we go forward today uh, is one of your individual fundamental things. It's called FAST. FAST stands for Fight, Assess, Scan, and, tri and Top Off. Fight, Assess, Scan, Top Off. You're fighting. You have hit your target. They have called out. That's your assess. Okay, they're dead. You scan to make sure that there are no more bad guys. And I don't mean just a basic little look around. I mean really look. Take your time. Look behind you. You're going to really want to pay attention to what people have in their hands. And this is something that came out in real steel training because I kind of gave a cursory look around practicing this. The guy behind me, sometimes he was holding a weapon, sometimes he was holding his key, sometimes he was holding his flashlight. And he caught us on it. So be careful what you're looking at. When you go to these events, some of these civilians will have knives in their hands, some have guns, some have garden hose. You don't know, but you have to really pay attention to when you scan. So don't just give a cursory look around. Take your time. Really pay attention. At that point, you scan. You know that you're good. You have that time and opportunity. You top off as we've already talked about. So fast. That's what you do after an engagement. So... F stands for what? Fast. A stands for what? Assess. S stands for what? Scan. T? Top off. Okay. So fight, assess, scan, and top off.